Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. I think one of the things I love most about having Missy Hall, comedian and survivor Missy Hall, come back pretty much every week and talk to her about our experiences and this cancer journey and comic perspective is because it seems like every episode we stumble upon something that somehow impacts our lives and we hope impacts you too. And if you haven't heard last week's episode with Missy, you've got to listen to it because this episode really will illuminate how powerful the last episode was. So I hope you get to hear that. And if you just are too impatient, you want to hear this one, you can fill in and then go back and hear that one. But I do think you should listen to that one first. So Missy, I just want to welcome you back to Beating Cancer Daily. I love you. I love you too. And thank you so much for having me back. And we do have great news. I always say this, but then I have to say, by the time you're listening to this, we might be in even more countries, but we just found out that we added Egypt, which is our 77th country that we are helping listeners. Oh, that is so amazing. I've never been to Egypt. Have you? I have not. No, I have not been to Egypt. Well, we are there in voice. (laughs) <laughs> Which, you know, and it's so funny. It just dawned on me when you say that the podcast is there. I forget that means <laughs> my actual voice is yeah. in Egypt, right? Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, this is so great. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on it. <laughs> you know? And at least 76 other countries, because we have people who come in through a VPN line and we don't even know what countries they're coming in from. So we have 77 documented countries as of today. And I just want to welcome everyone who's listening in Egypt. So you definitely have to go back and listen to Oh my gosh, there are hundreds of episodes of Beating Cancer Daily, and Missy is featured on 30 plus episodes, and Jackie's featured on almost 40 episodes, so just have fun. That's all I want to say, but Missy, you called me after the last episode, so I want you to set up what happened after the last episode so we can share that. Okay. Well, at the last episode, you told me some just wonderfully silly jokes that just lifted me up. And I was like, I'm telling that one the moment I walk into physical therapy tomorrow. Well, that's so so interesting that you say that because Missy is a professional comedy writer and comedian. So that if my silly jokes that I didn't compose, I might have modified them a little bit, but a lot of them just came from the internet. And mm-hmm. as she was telling me her story during the last episode, which was pretty compelling about physical therapy, how uncomfortable the experience was, and how she really felt the weight of the world on her shoulders a bit. And then I just started ripping very silly jokes. Well, there was a good, really good one, I thought. But yes. <laughs> very silly jokes pretty quickly at her because I started the Comedy Cures Foundation. And when I was in Missy's situation and I threw my first chemo comedy party, I saw the impact that humor, whether it was silly or brilliant, had not only on my journey, but on the patients that I shared 
those appointments with, those infusions with, the doctors, the nurses, my family, my friends. And so it was almost like a reflex, like an instinct. When I saw how annoyed you were and it was a hurtful too, this PT journey for you post cancer mm -hmm. treatment and surgery, my instinct just clicked in to start telling you humor about physical therapy. And I am so glad that you realized the impact that fast. Yes. And do you know what? I think you hit the nail on the head when you said you just started throwing out silly jokes. Because yes, I am a comedian. I write comedy. I live in that. However, this was me kind of in the dumps. So I wasn't creating the funny. I was home just kind of wah, wah, very Charlie <laughs> yeah, Brown. We all wallow. I mean, yeah. it's the pity party. And that's a great yeah. episode if you haven't heard it. But I sensed it. And yes. when I asked you if you had started to identify the funny and you started with two concepts, but you weren't getting there, I could see yeah. that you were in pain. And yeah. that's why I leapt in. But look at the beauty. It's almost like grace. It's just pure grace. That's all I can say, that you felt that love and that laughter and that touched a place in you that could then make you the observer of yes. the wallow and the observer of the discomfort in physical therapy and then lift up and then take action. And this is what I really want to share because you have devoted fans on this podcast who oh, can't wait so till you come on. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. They care about you so much. And so they loved that episode and they saw how it perked you and also how it gave you a strategy. And so I want you to tell us like the next installment, what happened the next physical therapy? <laughs> so I had physical therapy the next day and I was, at, I couldn't wait to go in because I just walked in and I could see my sweet, adorable therapist across the other side of the room. And I looked at her, I was like, okay. She looked at me, I was like, nah. And she turned around and looked at me. She's like, I don't want to answer you. <laughs> That's like, so funny. She's, I was like, well, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna knock. And she's like, oh, who's there? And I said, HIPAA. She's like, HIPAA who? I'm like, I can't tell you. Not only, she like threw her head down on the counter and was, and people around that I wasn't even addressing started giggling and she looked up and said i don't want to laugh at that but it is really funny and then i just did a like ha cha cha and gave her some jazz <laughs> <Yeah>. hands and <laughs> everybody around was giggling and what was nice for me is it wasn't my personality being funny i just attacked her with this joke you know, you and didn't have to do heavy comedy lifting because it wasn't no. your set. It wasn't your routine. Look, I didn't write that joke, but when I right. found it, I thought it was brilliant. And that's why I shared it with you last time. But I want to just explain it for a moment to you, because yeah. if you don't have HIPAA in the country that you live in, in the United States, it's a privacy act and it protects your physical, mental, and emotional information from getting circulated unless you give permission. You have to give permission. And now when you go to see any medical professional, you have to sign this waiver that says, if you want your medical details shared, you have to specifically give them permission or they will not tell anyone anything. So you even have to give them permission to tell your insurance company if you have state or private insurance. 
And that's why in America, that joke is so funny. And you may have that HIPAA regulation in your country, but it might not be called HIPAA. But that's why that joke to a medical professional and other people standing around was funny. Yes. And it was so funny because everybody in that room and you know, a physical therapy center is usually just a wide open space with all kinds of people on different equipment doing different things. So everybody in there in some way was dealing with the medical profession here in the United States at one time. So everybody knows what HIPAA is. And, and you're there for the lymphedema. I just want yeah, to clarify I, that because Missy yeah. developed lymphedema after her treatments. Yes. And then with the lymphedema, I got some frozen shoulder and just added to it, which is why I had been in such a funk, because I just kept feeling like I'm never going to be comfortable again. I am never going to have a day with that doctor's appointment, just that whole, you know. But it's also a lot of times with physical therapy, it gets so much worse before it gets better. Or if you don't see the progress the way you expect the progress, it can be depressing and frustrating. That's why I got the humor because yes. I just thought, oh my gosh, if you're stuck in that grind, maybe a little humor about PT could come in handy and look how it came in handy. It did. And to, to even, you know, lift it up another level, I actually had less, less pain while we were working my arm and shoulder. That's that amazing. Day. That's right. explained also by the endorphins that you produce when you laugh. They're exactly. natural painkillers. And probably you were just more relaxed and having more fun because you had cracked everyone up and it wasn't you performing. It was just you being a regular person telling some jokes. Yes, it really, it's exactly that. It wasn't me trying to make an effort to make everybody feel better with my own personality or my own content. It Which was, we do, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. When you have the gift to make other people laugh, sometimes you feel it's like your responsibility to do that, especially in a medical setting. So that's interesting that you're having enough boundary and not feeling yes. that you have to care for every single person. Yes, I think I think that I'm like I exhausted myself with that, particularly at the cancer center with radiation and with the people, the staff working with me there. And in, did you ever want to tell someone you were an accountant? Yes. The day that my radiologist asked me what my job was. And then he just stopped taking notes about my case at all and said, oh, who's your favorite comedian? I felt like, oh, should have said I was a banker. But uh, I just asked him, I'm like, well, who's your favorite radiologist? <laughs> <laughs> my, I can see it with my family. I usually just come clean and say I'm a stage four cancer survivor with no visible disease. And I'm CEO of the Comedy Cures Foundation. And we bring comedians like Missy to do programs for people who are having these life challenges or underserved, even medical professionals. But I can see when I say it in that kind of open setting, like a dinner party where people don't know me, I can see that my family just all of a sudden puts their head down like, oh, here we go. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> it's going to all become about comedy and or cancer now. <laughs> I think that's why the podcast is so fun because I yes. can just talk here and then be off duty a little more when I'm with my family. Yes. And I love the phrase that you're saying off duty because, and that's what I think happened to me that day when I could just tell that one joke and everybody was giggling, but it had nothing to do with me. And do you know what else was nice? And I didn't think about this until this moment. The other people standing around laughing at the joke have no idea who I am or that I'm a comedian. Nice. Right. So it was just, it, it, I got to just anonymously giggle 
And I don't know, just such a weight got lifted off me with those silly PT jokes. Like, yeah, I think just- you told the PT joke, the one about party. Part. No, I told the HIPAA joke, the PT. Did you tell the one about how do you I- spell PT? No, how do you? That's, I couldn't that remember it. Oh, the one about party. How do you spell PT? Uh, party, because it's got a P and a T in it. Wasn't that one? It, there was something like it, and I couldn't <laughs> remember. <laughs> I couldn't remember. There's our mutual chemo brain in motion. I was about to say, I'm like, I, yeah. I, we told gone. that, a, I told that a week ago, and I've already. A week, it's gone. It. It's gone. <laughs> the one I will, and there were several others. What was funny in for oh, some- you can't spell party without party a without PT. PT. Okay, let's say it one more time so we remember. You can't yeah. spell party, party without, without PT. PT. Yes. Oh, that'll be that will be Tuesday. The next one. <laughs> but that I think the delivery is that slow drawl on the PT. Oh yeah, without PT. T, right. <laughs> I'm sorry if you heard last week's episode and we've just repeated the two jokes, but that's what happens in comedy. You hear the same jokes over and over again and you still find them funny. Yes, it's true. It's true. You admire your friends that are comedians when you hear their set over and over again. You're just like, oh, I love this part coming. There's the, and then, like you said, the, even these little silly jokes on the internet, which some of quite brilliantly written, right? Sad that they don't have attributions. I always try to attribute the jokes if I can find it. And I always, when Comedy Cures produces comedy material, I always try to identify what comedy writer developed it and then give them credit because I think it's really nice when people can know who wrote the joke. But you brought up a really good point. How many times do you think you've said your most popular joke? I can't even begin to imagine. I cannot even begin to put a number to that. And you make it so fresh every time. It's like it's just popping out of your head. Like it's just baked and popped out of your head for the first time. It's brilliant about the comedy industry that, People get up there and they've told that joke for years or for months, and then they act like they've just said it for the first time. I find that amazing. And I actually adopted that with my cancer story because I have to tell it all the time. I mean, partially on this podcast, but in public speaking, in interviews with journalists. So I've told that story for let's see, 25 years now, diagnosed 25 years ago. And so I've told my cancer story for 25 years and I never want it to get old. I always want to feel like it's a miracle and a blessing. Yes. And here's why I think that you're so capable of doing that. Why I'm so capable of keeping material fresh is because we are thinking about the receiver of the story. We're not thinking about ourselves in that moment. So interesting you said that because Kate, who does our podcast, said that exact same thing to me this morning. She Mm -hmm. said that's what makes the podcast so special is that It's always with the heart, soul, and mind of our listener. And so I hope that's being transmitted through this audio wire into your heart, wherever you are listening to this in the world, because I truly do feel that, Missy, that, you know, we try not to have ego on this podcast. And so many podcasts are just so full of ego. I really think we both come to this and Jackie too, just wanting to be of service in the best way possible. I agree. And I see that on stage with you. It's not the Missy show. 
no, I'm the one doing the performing when I'm on stage, but I really am doing it for the audience. You know, I always think that there's somebody sitting in that room that either wasn't having a great day or is like feeling really good in her new necklace or something like for something, something about that night is special for somebody in this room in a good way and a bad way or whatever. It's a night out for them. It's a night watching and listening and that exchange of energy. And it just, it has nothing to do with me at all. Do you notice that people are like much more short tempered now and much more aggressive, like in everyday life? I'm trying to really observe how tense people are and then realize when they lose their marbles that it has nothing to do with me. Like I'm physically there, but this has to relate to something that predated me entering that scene. And I try to do that with a lot of compassion because I really feel this universal stress of people just walking around. Very few people come up to me in a day in a hospital, in a chemo room, radiation center, and just go, I'm so happy to be here. And I'm having the best day. It's right. really a lot of stress still piled on from post-pandemic and what's going on in the world. And I feel the weight of that. And I just love that you can walk on a stage on almost a daily basis and help people just let that steam off a little yes. bit. Let that steam off because... You know, if you envision every single person walking around with like this chain around their ankle with a boulder that they're carrying around, if you have the opportunity to just let them stop and rest for a minute and not be in the weight of that boulder, it's such a beautiful thing to get to witness. And I always think that it, is nothing that I'm doing is for me. It's for the other people. It comes through me, but not for me. Um, Does that make sense? Yeah, it really does. So just back to performing, Mm -hmm. how do you handle a heckler? Because (laughs) I was just thinking of, I, I was actually heckled, but I wasn't on stage. Somebody actually was just kind of mean to me in the universe. And I felt like they were heckling me. And I had this moment where I was like, in my head, don't heckle somebody who is professionally on stage with comedy, because we're just way more quick witted than somebody that's just in a bad mood, being nasty to a stranger. And so I just really decided to fill the space with compassion and not feed the fury of that or engage. I just took the target off my back yes, so that it wouldn't escalate. But how do you actually handle a heckler? Because you're so kind. What I like to do is, again, I like to deal with it with kindness because humor but kindness, because A, I don't want to escalate any kind of hostility that could be coming at me. The other thing is it's just not my personality. So I feel like if I ever do anything that goes out of character, it's just not going to feel right. And then it's not going to land. So normally I'll do something like, okay, you have so many things to say. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to put them in a little imaginary Ziploc baggie and we'll talk to them after this, because these people in this room, they're going to turn on you in a second, you know? And- That's so true. And I'm not sure if you listening have been to a comedy club before. Maybe you have. And I'm not sure if you've ever seen somebody you know, make fun or interrupt the show of the performer, but some comedians 
will go for the jugular. They will be so nasty right away so that everyone's intimidated and no one will ever say anything again because the person just, you know, chops it off right there. Missy, that's a really interesting technique, but that's true. You are so beloved and kind that I do think the audience would very quickly come to your defense. Well, and that's the thing, even if they didn't, just if I make that moment between the loud talker, the heckler, if I make it look like I'm making that moment between that person and me, I can be like, look, we're fine. We're good. But that lady over there just paid a million dollars for her babysitter. She's going to get you or something <laughs> along those lines. And then inevitably the crowd laughs or cheers and the person also can step away with dignity because that's the thing. I feel like a lot of times if you come at somebody who was armed enough with some sort of hostility or what they think is humor to come at you in the fir first place, they are going to feel the need to continue. Or they're just drunk. And or they they're have yes, no nine times or out of ten, they're just drunk. Yes. Yeah. But that kind of lets them step back quietly without also making them feel as more terrible than they need to feel. Yeah, because if they're doing it, something is off. Yes. And that's how I felt with this person that was acting so rude at a valet. I was like, <laughs> why are you acting rude at a valet for? Like, <laughs> we all just had a good night. <laughs> What's <laughs> happening? I didn't even cut in front of them in line, but I, it was obvious that person must have had too much to drink. But the this idea of dignity, giving them a moment of attention, also deflecting, doing yeah. it with dignity and giving it closure. I think that's a lesson that we can take into our life. It's not just for a comedian on stage. It's really a cool lesson. I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing how you handle that. Missy, I love when you are here. Thank I you. love when you come back. And I'm so happy that last week's episode not only helped people who listened, but that it was something that really resonated in your heart. And now you can go back to PT with the joke that you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like a nice shot at what is it? They give you a B12 shot or something. It was just like, oh, I felt like a watered plant. <laughs> We're done. It was lovely. So thank you so much. So, so much. Oh, my pleasure. If you want to follow Missy Hall, you can find her on all social media. She has a fun date night with her husband on Tuesdays live on Facebook. I've actually been offered to crash it to be yes. the third wheel. I'm very excited <laughs> <laughs> about crashing your date night. We'll have to figure that out in yes. over the summer, but you can find Missy Hall. And if for some reason you can't locate her, just write to me at comedycures.org. Just go to the comedycures.org website and hit the record button under the podcast section or go to the menu and just hit the contact button and we can get you in touch with Missy and her schedule and you can see her live and see how she hopefully doesn't have to handle a heckler. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you imagine people coming like, okay, let's go try it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. If you love today's episode, then tell the world. Why? Because Beating Cancer Daily and our membership circle are both a listener and donor supported experience. So the more people you tell and the more people that join us, the more robust and interesting programs our nonprofit, the Comedy Cures Foundation, can bring to you throughout the year. I really want you to go to ComedyCures.org. And of course, I always want you to make a donation. It's tax deductible to the extent allowed by law. 
But what's super exciting is not only can you laugh and explore the comedy there, you can look at our membership levels and find the one that's great for you. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, gift one to a chemo brother or sister or to a caregiver that you just want to help them improve the quality of their day. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.